Funny how a day pans out. <laughs> G'day, I'm Gavin from Hurley's Fly Fishing and welcome to another episode of On The Fly. Today we're up high in a, a Southland River system and we've got some crystal clear water with a stunning backdrop. I'm fishing today with uh, Scott and Shauna um, and this is just an amazing place. You generally need a couple of people. One is a spotter, uh, and Scott will walk up and, and find these fish and then you're lucky enough to have a couple of fishermen and that's myself and Shauna. Um, it's an incredible place. The fish are often bigger because the water's a lot cooler, more oxygenated. So they're pretty energetic fish and they can grow pretty big sometimes as well. So um, we'll trundle up this river and we'll hopefully find a few of these fish in the pools and put our fly in front of them and hopefully they like it. So the idea is that Scott will walk on uh, the other side which is better for the sun but not better to fish from. So he'll walk up along that bank, hopefully spot a fish and then we'll cast from this side. He's also, he'll, um, as well as the spotter, he'll let you know when the fish takes it as well. So that'll, he'll give us a, a yep or a strike or whatever when that fish takes. It's very hard to see, as you can see with that sun glare. So it pays just to have a spotter on the right side of the river. Right, so what do you got? Yep, I'm not going to see my dry. Right, you, cool. Yep. So you want me to go from here or? Yep, how deep is it? Yep. From there? A metre and a half, look where I'm pointing about there. Yep. yep. Righto. Right, you watch. Meter to the right, and then we're on the fish. Yep. So we're ready to go? Yep. Righto. doing we've had a couple of casts at the fish and it's very hard to see the dry because it's quite a small little Adam's parachute so uh, Scott's just going to put on something a little bit bigger that we can see so it gives you a better indication when that fish actually takes it. Beautiful. That's uh, that is teamwork. Oh, that's incredible. And we're in a stunning location, up high in the river systems in Southland. And this is incredible. And what you've just seen there is how you fish New Zealand. You've got Scott, who's the spotter, and is an excellent guide, by the way. And I can't see in that water because of the glare. So Scott's on that side. He's found that fish because he's got good eyes and he can see what these trout are like when they're hidden down there. We've gone through probably half a dozen fly changes to get the depth, change the indicators that we can see it. And uh, all I'm doing is just casting where I'm told and I'm like a, uh, a little mouse trap waiting for Scott to yell out lift and then you whack it straight away. Absolutely fantastic. 
and they'll be, be, be good fish. I mean, he's not a, a monster. They certainly do get them pretty big up here. But just in a stunning location like this, I mean, we've got snow-capped mountains, lovely crystal clear water, and you've got beautiful brown trout like this. It's, you just can't spend a day in an, any better location. Nah, he's still got a bit of go on him. They weren't coming in easy. No. So I thought the slow and they just got wearing themselves out. Yep. A little bit wrapped and in the net and they all count. And that's a beautiful start. Thanks, mate. Well done. Oh, Thanks, go. mate. You fish there. Beautiful. Sir. Thank you. I'll be over here. Yeah. <laughs> And that's a great start. I mean, that's a, a beautiful fish. We'll get him out in a second. Um, but a brown trout like this is just absolutely amazing in stunning location. I mean, you just look up there and you go, well, that's pretty cool with the snow. You look over there, you've got lovely rolling mountains, crystal clear water. It's just, you just can't find a better place to spend a bit of time. So uh, let's have a look at this fish. And you go, ah, a bit over four and a half, which is still a great fish. So uh, any fish is a good fish, but uh, four and a half is pretty cool as well. I've got one of those. They're really handy. In the mountains. I've got a friend, bitch. Oh! There you go. Stick caddis. That's what we got him on, but mostly micro nymphs. Wow. Big so that's a hairs here. Yeah. That's an assortment of different. Yeah, so it was more about depth by the look of it than the fly. Just yeah. It down to him. So just uh, this is what he, uh, an assortment of things that he could be eating, um, and that's. A horn caddis. Yep, which is what we got him on a pattern that looked like that. Yep, and then just what are these other nymphs? We've got juvenile mayfly nymphs, Delatidiums. Yep. All these guys. This fella here is a stonefly. Yep. So these are both two species of stoneflies. That's a Delatidium mayfly that's going to hatch because his wing case is black. And then we have some free swimming caddis grubs over here. These green guys. Look at these guys still this alive. He's happy. So he's just been eaten. Yep. So quite a good assortment of stuff from on the bottom. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's uh, an absolute stunning brown up high in this river system and just beautiful at uh, around about four and a half pounds ideal and there are some bigger fish the higher up in these river systems you get you do get some rather large fish but uh, size isn't everything and this is absolutely fantastic so we'll just hold him up there she'll just work out when uh, she's good to go and she'll swim out of your hands but uh, a beautiful fish and perfect good to go so that's uh, an ideal start uh, on a lovely day over here in New Zealand so Hopefully there's some more further upstream. Now we spotted a couple in this pool, Shauna. And uh, yeah, there's a bit more pressure in a river like this where they're A, the fish are bigger, and there's only like two every maybe half a kilometre. Yeah, and there's a camera. That's right. That really makes everything difficult. But what's the worst thing will happen? Well, we can delete it. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or I can leave it in particularly if you stuff it up. I don't think you do that to you. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. So what we're looking for as we walk up a, a river system like this is for uh, a dark shape or sometimes a, just a different colour in amongst these rock formations. And then once you see that, then you're looking for movement and that'll be him ideally just swinging left to right to find a nymph. And... Uh, then you want to put a fly in front of it. But the main thing is to walk slow, particularly in, in areas like this where there's only a few fish, literally, per you know, kilometre. So you take your time and make the most of every opportunity. to have a strategy when you're coming up to fish like this so you don't just want to just cast from where you're standing you've got to have a bit of thought to go into how you're going to present that fly uh, and also know how the drift's going to be plan ahead and your every chance of being successful Perfect. Drifting over it. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Everything right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Everything right. That's good. 
first cast, best cast, everything worked out pretty well, except they're not hanging on to it, but it's on. You rest him for a yeah. few minutes and then try something different with it, watch him. Yep. If he feeds a few more times, doesn't boogie, we'll, we'll put something else in. Sure. No, it didn't freak him or anything. No. Is he coming across to look? And so he's coming over. It's hard to see in the camera at home. He's coming over, look at it, and he goes, "There's something not right," mm -hmm. and deciding not to eat it. Mm -hmm. So instead of throwing the same thing and expecting him to change his mind, we'll change it for him and put on something else. Try, yeah. yeah, give him a couple more different things. That yeah, look like what we found. Yeah, and we tend to try and go smaller with smaller when we can. Or smaller or heavier. Take one more, then we're going to move on to the next one. Next one. Looking real happy. He's not swinging around much. Yeah, he's looking a bit. Let's know something's up. him to take um, which is why the indicator has gone down and he hasn't shot off so he'll take that spit it back out and then uh, find something else to eat so Scott will just change now he'll put on like a different fly that he hasn't eaten yet so um, put that on another couple of casts and uh, might get him to take Yes, well done. What a beauty. Excellent. And that's just brilliant persistence and good guiding. That's incredible. Well done, Shauna. Several fly changes just to get that depth and convince him that that was food and he had to take it. Well done. But just the rod high. Shauna's a bit of an expert, really, so she's terrific. And just tie that fish out. Let him fight against you and the current. And then we'll eventually be able to slip that net under him. Buried himself right in the, uh, the rocks in there. Might have wrapped it around. Now he's unhooked and he's off. And what a thumper, absolute thumper. And we've got uh, Shauna, like a Melbourne Cup winner, tearing down the, uh, the river. And trusty guide with net in tow. And that's the sort of fight that you're gonna get with a, from a fish like this, unreal. Might have to sneak down there pretty quickly too. Once they get that head in the current, you've gotta let them go. And where you've uh, gone down to three and a half pound reverge fluorocarbon, just to make sure that we can uh, get a good drift and get him to take it. And that puts a lot of things in these fish's favour because they're quite sizable and they get in that current. She played him like a champ. And as close as you can to shorten up, no, plenty of go still. There you go. Just when you think you've uh, got them beat, off they go again. Yeah. Beautiful. Tip 
seen a better husband and, uh, and wife team, I'll go he. What a champ, what a champ. That's a ripper, absolute ripper. That's what it's all about. Fantastic. You're a champ, Shauna. Yes, yes. I love you, Yeah. Woo. Well done. Well done, that was awesome, hey? Bit of a workout. Too. Oh, I did, I did. Hey? I didn't fall. Yeah, all that uh, aqua aerobics training you've been doing, well done. Oh, what a beautiful fish. How big is it? Six and a half. <laughs> Still my best. Yeah. There you go. Excellent. Amazing. Well worth all of the failed attempts. All the other fish that wouldn't take the fly. Yeah. That's incredible, isn't it? The size of that fish. If you can just show everyone at home, we can we show again how deep he is on the back there. That's incredible. And that's just a beautiful, stunning fish in this location, isn't it? Well done, Sean. One, uh, again, they're all very hard to see because it's a motley difference in there. Uh, but we can just see it's a sort of like a lighter brown colour against what are uh, sometimes black rocks. So you need to look at that for a little while and then every now and then you might see it move and that definitely gives it away as a fish. So I'm going to put these nymphs in front of it and get him to take it. Fish. One more. I'll just go on the other side a little bit just in case. No. Okay. One more. Oh, come, come. There we go. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. lovely. That was cool. We um, <laughs> get a bit deeper, I think. Yeah, to get that down for him to see it. Uh, cut the cast there. And I think that's exactly what it is. We talk about it often, you know, about getting that fly at the right depth for a nymph. And that's what it took. There was a, quite a few casts there until he actually saw it at his depth and, and then makes the choice, which is terrific. And it's just beautiful to get a, a fish, any fish is terrific but it just in this environment i know i keep going on about it but this is just amazing i mean you, you just don't get this in most parts of the world so to walk up a, a valley like this catch fish like this it's just gold here there's not a lot of um, willows or anything to give us too much grief the only things you have to be careful of are undercut banks and uh, we're pretty good here He'll be ready in a sec. He's still got a bit of go in him. But uh, once he's ready, I'll get his head up and Shauna will uh, be able to get that net under him. But the main thing is, particularly at this time, is not to panic. We all want it in the net, but we don't have to have it in the next 10 seconds. So just use your rod and let the rod do all the work and let him fight against it, tire him out and get him in the best position to get that net safely under him. He, he likes that fast current and that's why they've got a bit more going at it. The water is as like uh, quite cold and very oxygenated and uh, it gives him plenty of energy and we're almost good to get him in there and beautiful, gets him in there. So. Uh, that's a good result in a stunning location like this. And he's just a beautiful fish. What, what a stunning fish that is. I mean, the browns there are incredible. Spots, incredible. Originated um, these fish in particular from Tasmania and originally from the UK as well. And this is the perfect place for it. So, well done, champ. 
into the netting. Woo! In time. All right, and we'll just find another one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Just walk up the uh, river, and we've just spotted one just feeding under the surface, just on the edge of that fast water there. And he's taking nips. Not a big fish, but they're all fish. And uh, we, think we'll, we may even take a dry or an emerger just under the surface. We're getting to about one o'clock, which is a great time, particularly in October, for the, the duns to start hatching, um, which is why these fish are feeding quite aggressively now. So we'll put uh, this in front of him and hopefully he'll like it. All right, just got him in here with a couple of dries. Beautiful, and the uh, you certainly love that dry. The little one goes. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. And it actually is a reasonable fish that will. And that's the problem in that undercut bank, but we'll just get the pressure on, and he'll come back out. And that's why you want like a good rod. I've got the Stalker Legend, which is our new model, and we might even get this quick if he swims into the net, and he doesn't. And he's, there we go. And uh, a wonderful rod like that allows you to steer them around. It's a nine foot six weight, which is great for this style of fishing. And it certainly works. A couple of casts in there with the dry and gold. And uh, actually he looked, he looked a bit smaller than uh, actually what he is. So how many? Five and a half. Five and a half pounds. So you go, it's hard to grizzle and uh, complain about being stuck in your office, you know, today, because it's pretty dim pretty boring, not much happening. It's actually pretty good. It's actually pretty good. Stunning fish like that. I just I just can't say enough how cool this place is. This is absolute gold. Absolute gold. And you could just see he was in shallow water, so he was, that's why we thought, I reckon we can get him on a dry. Um, so Scott put like a, a little, little uh, parachute and then a little emerger. And uh, he can take his choice. We didn't care which one he ate, as long as it was one of them. And once he got to see it, he really liked it. Well, there you go. That's a stunning fish. I mean, it's five and a half pounds of absolute gold up in Southland. I mean, just the depth on that. I mean, it never really comes up on camera as big as they actually are. But he's got a, like the head on that is just incredible. And the depth on his body is just amazing, let alone the, uh, the width. That is a big, powerful fish, and uh, we did pretty well to net him in that small area. Got into the shallows, and uh, Scott got that net underneath him before he even knew what was going on, which is just gold. And that's what it's about. A beautiful fish like that, and keeping him in the water for as long as you can. We want that oxygen going through the gills. You know, it's all good, we'll get a photo, but you've got to be quick, and then get him back in the water again. So uh, they're good, just give them time to, to get their breath and I think he's pretty good to go now. So that's just fantastic. Just hold him there, yeah, once they're good to, to swim away like he is now, he's perfect. He's got plenty of go left in him and he'll swim away now and, and be ready for someone else to, to come up here and catch. He can get caught over and over again, which is, I guess, the beauty of fly fishing. You come to a place like this, sure, you've had some fun, but you're leaving it virtually untouched, which is fly fishing. That's what it's all about. And that's why you come to New Zealand and get experiences like this is just incredible. Uh, and I think that's a pretty good uh, way to end the show on a lovely fish like that in this amazing place. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. We've really loved being up here and, and catching a few fish and showing what you could do on one of your trips to New Zealand as well. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to catching you on the fly.